Alrighty team, it is time to get set up for March, but I will say it does kind of feel like we just set up for February, but that is fine. For the month ahead, my patrons voted to have a quilt theme as related to National Quilting Day, which is celebrated on the third Saturday of March each year in the US. I do think they may have in part picked it because they know my mum is a quilter, but more on mum later. Here we're starting with my projects list, which is very much becoming a staple of my setups. On this one, I really just give myself an overview of my YouTube videos that I need to make for the month, and also my patron perks to fulfill in that month. Sometimes I'll also put in sections for other things, like stuff to do around the house, or maybe some vlog videos to make. I know I've been neglecting the vlogs, but I will get back to it at some point. We're just not in the right season for it right now. But yes, sometimes I will put other sections on the projects list, but really the main purpose of the page is for my YouTube and Patreon stuff. For the headers on a good chunk of the layouts in this setup, including the one we're doing here, I used this picture as inspiration. I really liked the kind of almost falling leaves vibes it gives, even though it's just a bunch of triangles, but I thought that would make for really pretty header decoration on each of the pages of my setup. As said, this one is effectively based on triangles, so you can kind of think about it like it started off as squares and then each of those squares were divided diagonally to make the triangles, but the diagonal cuts are in random directions. And if you've been here a while, you know how I feel about randomness. I'm just not very good at it. So of course, changing up the direction of how the squares were cut in half diagonally led to a lot of overthinking and probably added to the time taken. Initially, I did just start out by mimicking the pattern in that reference picture from before, but I quickly ended up moving to just a gradual decrease in the number of filled in pieces. So if we break down the kind of design of the header, the header box itself is four dot grid boxes tall. So that's eight triangles per column. So I went from having all eight of those filled in on the left to seven being filled in, to six, to five, etc. And where those non-filled in parts were, I just randomized. This gave us that kind of gradient or kind of shattered or broken effect. I'm only showing the setup of this one header in this video because it's quite a lengthy process and it was actually much easier to do with my face a lot closer to my journal because the triangles are quite small and I wanted to be pretty precise with them. But in terms of filming with this overhead angle, you wouldn't really see very much if I held my face that close to the journal. You, you didn't really come here to see the back of my head. Once the color for the header was done though, it was then time to actually add in the text, but I wasn't too sure at this stage how I wanted to do that. So I decided instead to move on to the cover page and do the decoration on that one first. You can probably see that I did start with a pencil sketch of the layout that I wanted to do, but I actually ended up changing this. So rather than erasing everything and putting everything back in with pencil, I decided to put those guiding lines in with a light gray Statler Triplus Fineliner. This was just gonna allow me to see where I wanted my pattern elements to go and also where to stop my coloring without having harsh black outlines. There's nothing wrong with black outlines. In fact, I'm usually quite a fan of them and I do end up bringing them in in later spreads in the setup. But on this cover page in particular, I didn't want the black outlines to be there. If you actually think about the design of a quilt, you don't really usually have black outlines between the patchwork pieces. So to kind of go along with that, I decided not to put black outlines on this cover page, or at least not to start with. I did end up going and doing a black outline for the M later on though, just so I was really certain not to add color into that area. In terms of the pattern used on the cover page though, this one was inspired by a classic quilting design, which is called pinwheels or something along those lines. I'm not a quilter, so I don't know the exact terminology or how quilters would actually name the pattern. But after putting the guidelines in, I started mainly by putting in the darker sections for each of the pinwheels. So essentially looking at a two centimeter by two centimeter square and coloring in every second triangle going around that square. Hopefully that kind of makes sense, but I wanted to get good variation in terms of the darker colors that I was using for every second segment of the pinwheel. So I tried to go color by color with coloring in those darker sections. So using the first dark blue first and putting all those ones in using the second dark blue and putting all those ones in. I did only start with the bottom two rows though, because I kind of wanted to get a feel for how the pattern was going to look before I committed to it on the full page. It turned out that by the time I got to the third line, I recognized that I really did need more darker colors because I was only actually using three dark blues. 
So I also introduced my black Tombow dual brush marker into my pen lineup. This gave me four dark colors to play with, which kind of fit the need of needing four dark segments per pen wheel. Essentially though, once I did the dark sections, I could go in with my lighter or kind of mid-tone blues and color in each of the remaining segments. The nice part about starting with the dark colors is that it made coloring in with the lighter ones a lot easier. I didn't have to be quite as careful with those ones because it's effectively just coloring in between the gaps. And if you go over the dark sections with a lighter pen, it doesn't really show up as much. If you did it in reverse, well, yeah, you'd have to be a lot more careful. It's actually kind of crazy how long it takes to do a seemingly simple pattern. Like the header on the projects list and the full cover page took over three hours to complete. My hand was certainly sore after this, but I do think that it came out quite well and it looks visually effective. If I had to pick between doing this pattern again or buffalo plaid, I'd probably be more inclined to do the buffalo plaid, just because there's a little bit less thinking in terms of color palette. Like for the way that I do buffalo plaid, it's really just black pen on colored or white paper. So you don't really have to consider which colors are butting up against each other and whether there's gonna be enough contrast to actually see them as separate colors. I will say though, I really do wish that I had some more of the lighter blues in my lineup and it wasn't until I'd finished the entire of the March setup before I realized that I do actually have more blues that I could have used, but that's okay. Maybe I can incorporate them into the weekly spreads. As we saw at the start though, the main pens that I was using for my coloring in this setup were a combination of the Tombow dual brush markers and the Crayola super tips. This is honestly the most use that my Crayola super tips have ever gotten. And from using them as much as I did in this setup, I've actually become quite fond of them or a lot more fond than I initially was. If you were looking for a cheap set of markers with a great color range, then the 100 pack of Crayola super tips or even even the 50 or the 20 pack is a really great investment. I'm pretty sure I got mine from my brother for my birthday. As always though, all of the equipment I use in today's setup can be found linked in the description box below. We mentioned it before, but to make it so that the monthly cover page actually looked like it was for the month of March, I put a large capital M cut out of the center of our quilt pattern. I was originally considering actually spelling out March in full, but I wanted to make this setup as simple as possible, which with hindsight seems a little bit funny that I decided to tackle this theme this way, just given how long things took. But anyway, yes, I wanted to make the setup as simple as possible because I don't really have a lot of time between now and heading off on my trip to the US. Before then though, I do have a lot to get done. So I did in theory want to set up that wasn't gonna take too long. Normally I'm a better judge of how long themes would actually take me, but even though this one took much longer than initially anticipated, I do like how it turned out. To finish off the cover page though, I added a black border to our quilt and also a white dashed outline around the M, kind of to represent stitching. This is also what I'm gonna use for my header lettering on other pages. Coming back to the projects list though, originally I was just gonna put the black paper headers over the top of the header patterns that I've drawn in, but I didn't wanna cover up too much of them because well, one, they're pretty, and two, they took a lot of effort. So we wanna make sure we show that off. Rather than putting the black boxes straight on top of them then, I decided to have them offset. And I think that having them offset also helps them to stand out better just because it makes the black box a little bit easier to spot. To mark in where the projects on my projects list are going to go, I'm using my Zig Clean Color Dot Marker. I use these all the time. They are for sure one of my favorite supplies. Also linked in the description box below. Before we get into the monthly log though, we're just gonna flip back and have a look at how February is going. From my last monthly plan with me, you may remember that for February, we were going with a science theme and this involved me trying to age my pages. So using tea to stain the pages and also burning the edges of the monthly setup in particular to give it that kind of old science lab book look. While I am still chuffed with how this turned out, I will say that the lettering in particular that I used for the headers was really hard to recreate when it came to doing my daily logs. So I did end up going in a little bit more heavily with the Tombow Fudenosuke and the lettering doesn't look quite as consistent. So this would probably be something that I'd change if I were to do it again. But the tea staining and the burning of the edges I think turned out awesome. I kind of just appreciate how the tea staining itself makes the pages look decorative without having to add any doodles or other decorative elements. I am however looking forward to getting back to more colorful setups. You can see I have a list here of all the things I need to do before my USA trip. But with the projects list and cover page done, it's now time to get into the monthly log. I knew in doing my monthly setup for March, I wanted to use Dutch doors just to 
kind of limit the amount of decoration that I had to do, or effectively to have decoration on each page without having to draw it out multiple times. The Dutch door is going to be cut along the right hand side of the spread, so I'm leaving that blank, but this did also mean that I needed to make the boxes for my calendar a little bit smaller. So five squares across by five squares down. I am a little bit skeptical about how much I'll be able to fit into the boxes, because Typically I like a 3cm by 3cm box, or 6 squares across by 6 squares down. But I'm also going to be away for a chunk of March, so I don't really expect I'm going to be using my monthly log very much. After ruling in the calendar boxes though, and putting out the dots for each of the days of the month, it's then time to start thinking about the background. For this one we're going to be using another quilting pattern, and the pattern on this one was inspired by this picture here. But rather than doing concentric squares, I kind of just wanted to continue with the triangles that I've been using in other decorative elements. I did want some variation though, so for each of the alternating larger squares, the ones that are the same size as the calendar boxes, those were split into quarters. Every square that wasn't part of the calendar grid itself was then split into four triangles. So this does give us a different design compared to the cover page or to the headers that I'm doing on the other pages of the setup, but it still looks cohesive because we're still working with triangular elements and the same color palette. So the monthly log and I have an interesting relationship in that at the start of the month, I'm usually pretty good at filling it out, but towards the middle and end of the month, I completely neglect it. I have been trying to remedy this by kind of considering what information I actually store on the monthly log. So previously it would just be events and appointments, but I've started trying to kind of theme my days, I guess you could say, and recording that information on here as well. So for instance, things like a filming day or an editing day. I've also been noting down when I have live streams, but I don't typically note when I have other content releases because those get made and scheduled in advance, whereas the live stream I obviously have to rock up to at the time. It's been working fairly well for me in February and January, and I am getting slowly more consistent with using it. I know though for March, with me being away, I'm probably going to fall back into the habit of not using it quite so much, but maybe I can pick it back up again in April. Now, as I mentioned before, one of the reasons why I think this theme may have won when I presented it to my patrons was because they know that my mum is a quilter. Honestly, I don't even know how many years my mom's been quilting now. I know it's at least over 10, probably over 15, but she actually has her own quilting business called Beyond Meander, and she does the quilting for clients using her long arm quilting machine. My mom's a very creative lady. She makes lots of different quilts, but of course there's only so many quilts that you can gift to family and friends. So a lot of the quilts she ends up making get donated, whether that be to places like Foster Hope or Quilts of Valor. I honestly don't know all of the places that she donates her quilts to, because there's quite a few. One one of my favorite quilts that she's donated before was this robot quilt that went to a little boy that had leukemia, I think. So something nice and special that he could call his own when he was undergoing his treatments. This one here is one of the first quilts she made, which was for my brother. And of course, she also followed this one up by making a quilt for me, but I don't have a picture of that one. One of the funny things about that quilt is that it has this really bright yellow fabric, which kind of looks like bunches of bananas. And she's constantly finding scraps of it and putting it into other quilts and then like sending me the picture of being like, oh, look at what what I found, yes. It's kind of nice to see little bits of my quilt and other quilts. One of my all time favorite quilts that she's made has been this one, which is called Tracks. I in part like it because it's rainbow and also because I helped her with it too. Though I wasn't a very good helper as evidenced by this picture in that I rotated one of the pieces while she wasn't watching and then she sewed them together and was most unimpressed with me. She hasn't actually finished quilting it yet. She's only made the top of the quilt and I hope that one day, maybe sometime soon, Tracks will get finished because I absolutely love it and I want to steal it off her. <laughs> Along with donating a lot of the quilts she makes to nonprofits and other organizations that help people in need, Mum also has a quilting pattern that she made and sells through her Etsy shop and all of the proceeds from that she donates to Foster Hope as well. That one makes a really pretty quilt that she calls emeralds, though of course you can use different colors to get different gemstones and that one's linked in the description box below. I know she tried hard to get me into quilting, but sewing really wasn't for me, but I'm hoping that she will like my quilting inspired bullet journal setup. You'll have seen in the setup so far that I've been using washi tape to mask the page anywhere where I want crisp, clean edges. 
I know that with having a quilt theme, I probably could have gotten away with having some more irregular edges, but for the headers, whether they be for the full page or for individual lists, I really wanted those ones to be nice and crisp and clean. We've talked about it before, but this is essentially my favorite way to use washi tape. And if you're going to be doing this for yourself, make sure that you use a washi tape that doesn't stick too well to the paper. Effectively, you wanna be able to pull the washi tape up and away from the page after you've done your coloring in, but not have it rip the paper. The stitched font that I've used on all of the headers for all of the pages of the setup is essentially just a simple all caps font that I've done with dashed lines. I thought this made the headers look just a little bit more decorative than my usual capital letters, and it also ties in nicely with the quilt theme. I'm also just a sucker for contrast, so having the white jelly roll ink on top of the blackout paper is exactly what I like. Sticking those ones in though, and it's time to cut our Dutch door. I did admittedly have a little bit of trouble with this because I don't know if you guys have ever had it where you've gone to cut a Dutch door and when the pages are turned one way, they all line up nicely, but then you turn them the other way and they are not. That is very much what happened with my Dutch doors, which did lead to some creative coloring and also kind of weird cutting, where the tab that I have on this first Dutch door doesn't actually go all the way to the cut edge of the Dutch door. I know I'm explaining this poorly. Hopefully you can kind of see what I mean from the visual. It does annoy me but it's not annoying me enough that I feel the need to go and change it. We'll see what happens when I actually start using these pages in March. I may have to go in and do some creative fixing. After the monthly log though, we are onto the next spread, which is where I'm gonna be having my actions list and my habit tracker. These are gonna take pretty much exactly the same format that I had for February, but at this stage, because we're only halfway through February, I'm not actually gonna be populating these with my actions or my habits. I wanna wait until I do my monthly reset or kind of like end of month reflection, where I'll actually decide on what my actions for the month ahead are and my associated habits for my habit tracker. So on my actions list, I just write out the header for my one-off or monthly tasks. And on the habit tracker page on the right hand side, for this one, I have a header bar for putting in my icons, which represent my habits. And I've also got all of the days of the month listed out along the left hand side. This gives me space to track up to 19 habits, which is the same number of habits that I currently have in February. But just in case I want to change it up, I am going to leave it blank for now. Flipping on over though, and we are into my Instagram scheduler slash social media posting log. We spoke about it last month, but I have been finding my Instagram scheduler page so super helpful for actually holding me accountable to posting on Instagram. At the moment, I'm trying to post three pictures a day. And yes, note that I said pictures, not reels. That is not a current Jess focus. It's very much a future Jess problem. In fact, if there is anything that you would like to see me do in shorts or reels or TikTok kind of form, I would love to hear about it. Long form content is very much my comfort zone, but I do know that there are topics that would probably be better suited to short form content. So if there's anything that you'd like to see in that style, just let me know. In fact, if you ever have any content ideas for me, whether they be long form or short form or live streams or whatever else, I do have a link in the description of each of my videos where you can leave those suggestions for me. And a big thank you to everyone who has left one so far. On the left hand side of this page though, I have three columns for each of those three posts to Instagram. Whereas on the right hand side, I have one column for my YouTube community tab, one column for posting in my Facebook group, and one column for posting on my Facebook page. I've been better in February at not getting the Facebook group and Facebook page columns confused because that was an issue I had in January. So hopefully that lack of issue continues into March. On to our next spread though, and admittedly, this one was actually kind of a mistake. I accidentally cut an extra Dutch door, but I thought that this would be a good space to have a note section. While I'm away on holiday, I don't plan on having weekly spreads because I'm not really gonna be doing a lot of to-dos, I expect, but having a space to write down things that might not necessarily need to get done right then and there, but I want to remember for when I get back from my trip, that could be a good idea. This isn't something that I include in my setups very often, and often when I do include them, they don't really get used, but I do appreciate having the kind of safety net of the note space, just in case I need it while I'm, again, away on holiday. My line work here could have been a little bit neater, but if I'm completely honest, I was working on this at like 
3 in the morning. I wasn't lying when I said I have a lot to do before my trip to the US and I'm very much running out of time to do it. So I am cutting into my sleep time a little bit. But I'm okay with the occasional sleep sacrifice, provided it's not like a really super regular thing, like the fact that it's the next night since I filmed this and it's now past midnight doing the voiceover, but shh, it's okay, it's not a habit yet, we'll be fine. As you can see though, the notes page is well and truly done and we are on to my monthly reflection spread. I have been so chuffed with the fact that my monthly reflections are actually getting filled out this year. And yes, we are only one and a half months into the year, but I'm still taking the win. Small progress is still progress. We should be proud of ourselves. This spread is effectively what it sounds like, a place to kind of reflect or review the month that was. And I do tend to fill these out as the month is going along. So for instance, I have actually started filling out my February one, even though we're not quite at the end of the month yet. Just because if something comes up that I know I'm going to want to note down anyways, I might as well fill it in while I still remember to fill it in. If that kind of makes sense. I'm not going to put in the different sections for the reflection just yet because I want to make sure that I'm actually happy with my reflection categories before I populate this one. I've used the same reflection categories for both January and February, so having two kind of goes of them to really make sure that the prompts that I'm using are the ones I want will probably be good before I commit to having the same ones for March. I don't expect them to change all too much. If anything, it'll probably just be the spacing that changes, maybe a slightly larger section for the memories, given the whole going away thing, and thus maybe less space for other sections to accommodate that. But the end of March is a fair way away, so I have plenty of time to think about what I want to include on this one. As mentioned earlier, one of the reasons that I wanted to use a Dutch door in today's setup was so that I could have decoration on effectively every spread, but only have to put it in once. And that's what this panel on the right hand side is for me. The nice part about the Dutch door and having this panel on the very right hand side of the spread means that I can see it on every spread. The tabs do sit on top of the decorative panel, but you can still see a good chunk of the pattern regardless of which page of the setup you're on. I mean, outside of the cover page and the projects list. Although it was a little bit more time consuming than I had initially anticipated, I am really chuffed with how this quilt theme turned out. I'm not too sure at this stage yet how I'm going to incorporate these patterns into the weekly setups, but I've got some time to think about it before I actually need to set those up. As mentioned, I'm not going to be doing any weekly setups for the first bit of March. I'm really only going to be using them when I get back from my trip. So I've still got a good amount of time to think about how I want to incorporate that quilting theme into those pages. If you are still on the hunt for more March bullet journal inspiration, then I do have a playlist for just that. That one's in the top right hand corner. Or if you are looking for monthly bullet journal setups in general, then the one in the bottom right is where it's at. Click or tap on either of those and I'll see you over there.